a small and abandoned house with a tangled garden growing free and wild can create a lot of wondering who once lived there and what was the reason they deserted their property why was it being unoccupied all these years could it be because the lonely property where the light sighs, sighs and the dawn blinds shut out the sunshine is haunted such a house it could stood the tree shadows on elm street only the old timers could recall the sinister sisters mary margaret bond their genteel maidens shy to the world living within the bonds of their comfortable inheritance low walls of natural rock and surrounded their home being part of the neighborhood seeing they were not singled out as a curiosity until the day arrived with what it was noted they had apparently disappeared of course it didn't vanish into thin air but they had separated and taken up living quarters elsewhere but why only their faithful housekeeper mrs holmes knew the answer he obtained the story from her a tale of jealousy hate and two very small ghosts named chipper and susie chipper as you might well guess was a canary a velvet pride and joy susie the hand of her hand was a natural born enemy a chippy species susie was a cat the object of her mistress's devotion susie belonged to mary a green-eyed bundle of fur wandered from room to room throughout the house causing was it often and speculatively before Chipper's age? His attention caused the little bird considerable alarm. His song was often mingled with cries of terror. Try as he might, Mrs. Holmes could not watch Susie close enough to prevent these encounters. The other sisters were bitterly resentful for each other's pet, and the situation finally came to a strange climax. During one of Mary's brief shopping tours, Moment poisoned and buried Susie in the garden of the family garden. Miss Holmes witnessed this in silent horror. It was an act she knew would have repercussions in the broken bond household. Indeed it did. Broken hearted over the loss of a pet, who she believed bleed had wandered away. Mary brooded brittly the presence of the small song bird. Meanwhile another strange event took place. Over a patch of earth that toppled Susie topped Susie's grave. It grew a cluster of wild poppies, with flowers of fragile, fragile, fragile and tissue like blossom. But no, un- unwelcome as cultured garden, it twisted and tripped roots were not content to remain underground. It was Mrs. Holmes itself who encouraged Mary to weed them out. It seemed a happy thought to get the grieved green- sister out of the sunlight side. Perhaps it was fated that Mary would be satisfied to simply weed out the poppies. As she would turn over the earth in her garden, and discover what blood chilling shriek the corpse of little Susie. Wide eyed, she ran into the room where the chirper hopped about in his cage. It was too late for Mrs. Holmes to stop her. The chirper died quickly, and the circle of fate had completed its turn. Soon, as sisters parted and found the house stood alone, Mrs. Holmes clearly abandoned, eventually abandoned the momentary task. Cleaning the only mounting dust within, for she vowed only too often she could hear the ghostly strains of a fretted little song. At the end of a cry of fear, the low cat like shadow brushed against her apron skirt. When they tied up the room, when she tied up the room, where, she, where, she, where once stood a gilded cage.